From the last two examples, I've shown you how to use integration to expand our Coulomb's law from just dealing with point charges to at least um, line charges, either a straight line or a circular arc, in particular points. Now these results, we can further make use of them in combinations such as what this question is showing you. So this here is actually an example of making use of existing results and combining them in order to find the electric field of a combination of shapes without having to integrate all the time because we have made it a point actually to do the last two questions completely using symbols so that we can adapt those results in new situations and put it together into more complicated looking situations such as this one that we have here. If you look at it, this is just a combination of the stuff we've done before. We have one part, we have a straight line pointing in a certain way, and then we have another straight line down here giving us a few in a certain other way, and then this here is just our circular arc again, which is exactly at the same point again at the center of the circular arc. So let's adapt our results previously into each of these situations. I'm going to break this up into section 1, section 2, and section 3. Section 1 and 3, it's a straight line, so it's we're going to adapt the results we have from 5-83, also in a way incorporating the fact that one end of the wire is all the way out at infinity. So the previous result from 5-83 looks like this. That situation had the rod going from 0 to L, the point at L plus A, and I guess since we're going to use both X and Y, we're just going to call this axis L. So then this E here is given by K lambda in the, in this case I guess the L hat direction pointing in the L hat for positive lambda, and it was given as 1 over A minus 1 over L plus A. And so we'll adapt this for our situation. Let's start with section 1 with the Y. The point is actually at 0. The line starts at R, and the other end ends at infinity. So first off, even though it looks like it's the mirror image, that's not going to affect the magnitude. It's going to affect our direction. So we know instead of talking about L hats, we know we should use negative J hats. That's not a big deal. Then it's just a matter of adapting these distances and magnitudes. So the one key distance is between the end of the rod and P, which used to be called A. And in this case, that's R. And then the distance from P to the end of the rod is L plus A. But in this case, it's infinity. So we're just doing physics here, so we're going to be a little sloppier with where we put our infinity. Officially, you should be using limit notation, but in the end, it works out the same way. So we know that r is equal to a, and then that's e l plus a is going to be infinity. The adaptation here is we have k lambda, that stays the same, 1 over a. a is now r. r is the new a, and then this is infinity. L plus A becomes infinity, and then instead of L hat, we're going to put negative J hat because we've flipped the situation around with the mirror image. This, of course, 1 over infinity is equal to 0, or I guess officially you can say L plus A approaches infinity of 1 over L plus A is equal to 0. Same thing. Very similarly, we can just kind of slap this as an X <laughs> and s call E3 to be 1 over r, and then a negative i instead of negative j. So let's sketch those in. We got e3 in the negative i direction, e1 in the negative j direction, and then what we have left is region 2. So we got, based on the hard work we've done before, we are very quickly did two thirds of the problem without doing any integration whatsoever. Okay, and the next step is to adapt this results from 5-90 to our part 2 of the circular arc. The situation we got last time looked like this. We have that symmetry, 
right down the middle to the center, giving us an electric field in that direction. Going from, we got R, big R, theta on each side, and we don't want to commit to any X or Y, so we're going to call this, let's say, let's call this R, the R axis, because it's the radius, so it goes from the center outwards. Given that that's the case, the result we got from before is negative KQ theta R square sine theta in the R hat. The direction is in the negative R hat direction. So let's go and start replacing all parts of this thing. First off, let's talk about Q. Well, how do you get rid of Q? Well, Q is now related to lambda. The Q of just this part is going to be lambda times little r times 2 theta, where theta in this case is, this here is a 90 degrees angle, so half of that, it's going to be 45, but we have to use radians, so not 45, but pi over 4. In any case, uh, we can see that the theta is going to cancel top and bottom, so we're probably fine there. Big R is now known as little r, because they use little r up here. So we've got the Q, we've got the theta taking it off, we've got the R taking it off, of course sine theta taking care of. Then we need this R hat vector. The R hat vector goes from the center of the point outward onto the arc. So in this case, it's kind of going like that. The 45 degree thing, so R hat in this case is going to be cosine pi over 4, again 45 degrees, in the I hat plus sine pi over 4 in the J hat. Putting it all together, E2 is equal to all that fun stuff. Theta and theta goes away, one of the R cancels one of those R's. We have this thing, which is in fact 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. So it becomes a 1 half and then another 1 half, which cancels with this 2 actually. A lot of things clean up, surprise, surprise. It's like they designed the question to make things cancel out or something. Looking like very simple. Something in the direction of negative i plus negative j. Which is what we expect, right? Looking back up in the diagram here, we're going to end up with E2 looking like that. And we do expect that because if you look back all the way, the, the entire picture, you will notice there is a axis of symmetry along this 45 axis. And so you would expect in the end that the answer should go along this kind of 45 axis. Last step is going to be very, very trivial. We just have to add up all our contributions. So then all the electric field combined is E1 plus E2 plus E3. Writing that out again. There's my E1 plus E2 and also E3. Adding up the I and J separately. We have, it's nice how everything looks exactly the same. Giving us finally that we have this lovely thing, and again, the symmetry as expected. And also expected that it goes away from the positive charge. This question is a great demonstration of how, because we have done things analytically, we can make use of these results without having to integrate all the time. Once we've integrated, we have the results, we can adapt these to different situations.